up too much longer. Um, if people come, Beyonce has kindly put signs on the doors downstairs so people know that they can come in and um, and be welcome. Just the top one. Just, Just the, the top one. Beyonce. All right. All right. Just this one first. Mm -hmm. And then I'll tell you when it's here. And you might want to put some ink in here. Just the So everyone here knows I'm Ms. Benjum, and um, if you didn't know, Benjum is an Akan name um, from Ghana, because I married a Ghanaian man, Mr. Benjum, who was here with us this evening, and he teaches at Furness High School. He teaches mathematics at Furness High School. Um, and Mr. Lloyd, who I always call Mr. Lloyd, I, I forget your last name. Murray. Lloyd Murray. Mr. Lloyd Murray from Palace Travel, and we've been working together to put this trip together for our school um, in the most cost-effective way for the number of people that we um, would like to have attend this trip. Um, welcome. Um, so. Anyone who um, wants to go, children, parents, our families are more than welcome to go, but it is a process to get involved. I do have to introduce, this is my, my pastor here, Reverend Eaton, and he is here with us tonight, so you young people just know I'm covered. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so, um, we are going to go to Ghana. The first thing that you want to write down are the dates. June 14th to June 28th, 2017. So for a total of 14 days, Mr. Lloyd and I at first talked about June 13th to the 27th. Um, but that's me and my thinking and being very ambitious. School closes on June 13th next year, so at least we'll have one day. To, to before we leave. Um, uh, it's better for us and in my mind to leave in the evening so that we can sleep on the plane so that when we get to Ghana, we're ready to go. Um, so we will leave probably the at late afternoon evening of June 14th. Um, and after we find out exactly how many people would like to go, we have a definite number, we'll be able to lock in that the flight patterns at that time. Um, and Mr. Uh, Murray will talk more about that later. First of all, for my young people, I, I wasn't sure if you all even knew where Ghana was. Ghana is one of the West African countries, um, and it's right there at the Atlantic Ocean. The, the, the Atlantic Ocean touches the shorelines of Ghana. And what makes that really special for us in Pennsylvania is New Jersey and those shorelines and Maryland and Virginia, all those shorelines and, and Florida, all those shorelines touch the Atlantic Ocean. So there, when you go to Ghana, you are still connected to our home country here in the United States by that big mass of water. So I wanted you all to see it. The other countries uh, that surround Ghana are Burkina Faso, um, Togo, and Cote d'Ivoire. And in Ghana and all the African countries, they'll say Cote d'Ivoire. And here we say the Ivory Coast. <laughs> so that's how we kind of um, change things to suit our own tongue. Um, so that's where Ghana is. So in Ghana, like in the United States, we have 50 states. In Ghana, their states are called regions, and they have 10 regions. And while we're there, we'll visit five of the 10 regions. Um, Greater Accra region is where the international airport is. So everyone who comes in from any other country into Ghana comes through the greater Accra region. Um, Central region, that's where Mr. Bentoum is from, and that's where we'll see 
uh, many of the castles. The, what they call the slave castles, but really they were castles that held Africans prior to being brought to America into slavery. And then the Western region is now, you know, loaded with oil and a lot of natural resources. Um, so it's very important for us to see that. And Miss Reed is here because she's a biochem and a scientist and all these natural resources that have so much to do with science and how they're used there and how the country is right there. And then we use these resources here um, Ms. Reed is really interested in that and I want her to go because of that so she can see that and also talk to us more about how science is connected to the land and to us by way of, of Ghana. Um, in the Ashanti region, the Ashanti is also a tribe um, and the Ashantis are known for their business way. Of, of thinking and living. So the Ashantis were huge uh, back in the day, and I think they still are today. Yes, it's, it's still the, the... They still are today, and that's where um, the kente, a lot of the kente cloth comes out of the Ashanti region, um, and a lot of the jewelry and beadwork comes out of the Ashanti region, and you still have some really big time kings in the Ashanti region, so you have to see that. And then the Eastern region, you have natural resources, um, and not just food ways, but also uh, waterfalls, and a lot of things that we use that are, have palm oil in it come from the Eastern region, well really all over Ghana, all over Ghana, but the Eastern region is noted for that. But also, Mr. Bentoon went to school in the Eastern region, and we will be visiting his school, um, where he went to school. Um, so that will be a part of it. And you can see that here and on your sheet. So with all that in mind, um, you know, this is a, a global education mission. Why are we going? We're going for three huge regions. First of all, the cultural connection to Africa and the motherland. Mr. Johnson was like, oh, Ms. Bentoon, the kids need to go to Africa. They need to go. Families need to go. Um, and we need to offer that opportunity through this school. And because I go all the time, um, it, it was really easy for me to see my way through this but it's difficult to put something like this together. It's easy for me to see my way through, but difficult for me to put it together. Um, so in doing this, it's like a team effort. But all the different things that we're going to do, I have listed up there. I don't know if you can see it on yours, but the cultural aspect is to visit the palaces, the Kente village, the Cape Coast and Elmina castles, um, the Kakun National Park. They have a national park, um, uh, what do they call it? It's a tropical forest. Um, the W.E.B. Du Bois Center. There was Du Bois, who many of the students might have heard of. He's written a lot of work um, and lived in Philadelphia, graduate of University of Pennsylvania. He ended up living there and dying there. The father of the country, uh, Kwame Nkrumah, gave him land. His home is there, he's buried there, his wife is buried there. Another connection for us, and specifically in the Philadelphia area, Du Bois. And then the Kwame Nkrumah Square, who is known as the founding father of Ghana. And Kwame Nkrumah went to graduate at first, his undergrad degree was from Lincoln University, and then he went to the Wharton School of Business at University of Penn and graduated, got a master's degree from there. So you have to see his, um, everything there, that his monument and all things in reverence to him. Um, because you, again, here in Philadelphia, we are so connected to Ghana and Ghana is so connected to us that, and, and these are things that we don't 
really recognized. Um, and then the Ashanti, um, the Ashanti Craft Village is another place where we'll go. As far as science and environmental, the Cocoa Farms, Hershey's, Nestle, all these companies farm in Ghana. A lot of the cocoa that we eat, the, co the, the drink we drink, the chocolate we eat, a lot of it is coming out of Ghana. Um, and then, of course, the waterways. And what you're going to find is in the waterways, and I'm doing all the science talk because of this read. I have to keep her interested in this because I really want her to go. The waterways, they are conduits of so many resources, diamonds and gold. And some of these waterways are now being bastardized by others who are coming in um, to take over. Um, and we'll see some of that. And then the palm oil women, how the palm comes straight from the tree and then is processed in a natural way, not in a factory, but we will be able to go and see the palm oil women do their work. And then Bachi Falls, which is a waterfall, it's just a beautiful area. And then also rubber plantations. There are many rubber plantations in Ghana, and that's where we get our tires from. Um, and when you when you walk up on the land, you can smell the rubber. It's like you're in a new tire shop. It's really smelly, but it, it's all natural. So you real you know that you hit somewhere. So as far as the educational connection, we're collaborating with uh, Ghanaian schools. One school is. Um, Koferudia Sec Tech, which is a secondary technical school, um, and it was specifically uh, opened and run for boys. There are about 2,500 students, but they do have about 250 girls there in any one year. So that's very interesting, and it's a boarding school. There's another boarding school that we will be seeing, Archbishop Porter Girls um, Secondary School, run by Catholics. We will also go to a Methodist school, um, Sekundi Takradi uh, Methodist school, and looking at your family, you know, I do know some Muslim schools, and we're going to have to contact some people, uh, Bentoon, and we can visit some, uh, put some Muslim schools on our agenda as well, because we certainly want to cater to everybody who comes on this trip, and it's very easy to do. It's not like it's a hardship to add another school on the agenda. Um, for the classroom experience, school will still be going on when we go. Um, and so the young people, as well as families and parents and chaperones, will be able to see uh, what happens in their classrooms versus what happens here in the American classroom. And then you'll be able to do team talks with them. As you go through this process, because it's going to take a year, we'll do a global read where we'll read the same book with students in Ghana, and then we'll do a Google Hangout connection um, so that we're talking to Ghanaian children before we even go. Uh, and they do speak English. English is the national language because of all the uh, various tribal languages in order to understand one another. In that, this particular country, they speak English. Um, and then, as you see, the school names are up there. But I'm going to find a Muslim school, too, also to go to. Now, the big question is price. How much will this cost? Well, I have to tell you, it is about a two to three hundred dollar difference based upon what we picked and what Mr. Murray got together for. On the low end, it could be $3,400, but on the high end, we're talking $3,600 per person. That includes your lodging, your flight, two meals daily, transportation while we're there, and entry into all activities. Um, let me get for you, uh, and here's Mr. Johnson, our principal over here. He's our principal. He doesn't like to say he is, but he is the head man in charge. This is my pastor. Uh, pastor, how are you today, sir? <laughs> I'm good. I was, I was like strong armed. They could be here. You're always welcome. <laughs> 
Uh, so um, the pricing covers a lot. Um, and again, it's your hotel, your flight, two meals daily, um, that's breakfast and dinner, transportation, because we do need um, uh, to be mobile when we're in Ghana. We have to pay for that. Fuel costs there are very expensive. Um, and then the visa is going to cost about $100 per person. That's included there. The passports, everyone will have to buy their own passport and have their own passport. However, I do have passport information and the packets so that you can apply for your passport. There's a low range if you're under the age of 16. The passport is only $105. If you're over 16, the passport is $135. Now, the good thing about acquiring your passport, it lasts for 10 years. You don't need a new passport for 10 years. But you have to have a visa to enter into Ghana. So if you're really, really interested, that's one of the first things that you want to do is to get a passport. And I think that's all the slides that I have. And now I'm ready. Uh, I'll let uh, Sam, uh, Mr. Bentoon, speak a little about Ghana. Because one thing that one of the children said to me today, well, my mom's not sure she's going to let me go because she wants to know that I'm going to be safe. Ghana is one of the safest countries on the continent because they never fight there. They never fight. Um, it's just a very peaceful country. The people are nice, they're loving, they're welcoming. I was first sent there by the U.S. Department of State um, through a Teachers for Global Education program. I happened to be assigned to a school, and uh, I was assigned to Mr. Bennett's school. He was his host, the host teacher was his best friend, and that's how I met him, and we ended up being around. We never. We talked every day since I first met him. We talked every day. And so I ended up marrying Mr. Bentu. And um, and I'm not saying I ended up. I was lifted up into marrying Mr. Bentu. <laughs> and, um, and, you know, and so now we're here. And, um, and, and we're here doing this trip because Mr. Johnson wants this trip to really, really happen. Um, so you want to say something? And I'll be quiet for a minute. I can talk. And you know, you know that if I say something about Ghana, you might think that I want to just convince you to go to Ghana. Why don't you <laughs> allow Mr. Mali to go? Yeah, he is not a Ghanaian, but he has been in Ghana for a long time. So if you can just say something about Ghana for them to know that I'm not just convincing them to go to Ghana, I'm very glad. <laughs> okay, good, good evening, everyone. My name is Lloyd Murray from Palace Trump, and I've been going to Ghana since 1994. And um, uh, the first group we took to Ghana was from right here in Philadelphia from double, at the time it was WHAT radio station. It was a talk radio station. We took a group with Cody Anderson there. Now, I heard about safety. Um, Ghana has had, uh, they, they been saying recently that you can only be a John to be president in Ghana because the last um, the last three presidents they had they were all John there was John John Kufour democratically elected then there was John um, Atta Mills democratically elected he unfortunately died in office and he was succeeded by John Mahama and okay this person here Remind me, he's the, is he the only no, one who's not a John? Yeah. Yes, no, 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 for Adolf. Co for Adolf. He's, the, he's the last democratically elected president. That's, that's not a John, so they broke this, um, this John <laughs> tradition. Um, and, and so the same time when the election was going on here, it was going on over there. And it was less drama over there than it, it was here. And, uh, new president has been in office since last mm -hmm. December. Um, Ghana is, is, is peaceful. Uh, the, the U.S. has a lot of money 
in invested there, and that's probably one of the one of the reasons why uh, it's going to be stable at least for a long while. There's a there's a, one of the biggest embassies in that region in Sub-Saharan Africa is right here in Ghana, and um, the U.S. government does a lot of things there. They bring people from all over West and Central Africa to train there in Ghana on security. Um, in whatever, against narcotic security that's going on there all the time. So concerning safety, right, you don't have to be concerned about that. And there's so much confidence in what's going on there that um, Delta has a nonstop flight almost every day from New York. Um, South Africans saw the, the, the potential and they established a non-stop flight from Washington DC and of course all the European carriers are going in there. British is going in every day of course they go to London, KLM is going in every day, they go to Amsterdam. So the, the, the confidence is there and um, for the person who is concerned about safety there's um, there's no need to be concerned about that, and I'm sure there may be some people are, are um, thinking about um, what they're going to eat. Who are, who's thinking about what you're going to eat? <laughs> well, you'll be you'll be um, you'll you'll get a chance to be enterprising <laughs> to try some some um, different uh, food, but you won't be you won't be if you don't if you're you're not enterprising enough to try some new food. Um, there's always the American style stuff, so you won't you won't have a problem there. But I, I tell you, one thing we all know that if you were born in Ghana and you grew up there and you were drinking the water while you're there, you you're immune to anything. But once you leave and you've been away for a long time, your system may not um, adapt. So when you go back, you still have to take the precaution. The, 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 you have to drink bottled water, and of course you have to get your, your shots, your yellow fever shot down. The, the main requirement to enter Ghana, the main um, immunization requirement is yellow fever. And once you have that, it's good for 10, 10 years. And most countries in West and Central Africa require that. So if you're gonna travel somewhere else, you have that. While, while malaria is, prevention is not mandatory. It, it's not a requirement for entry, it's recommended because um, you're in a strange place and you can be bitten by mosquitoes. So, your, your, your physician will give you a prescription for that. And um, there's some prescription nowadays that you take one and you don't have to take it again. Some you take one every week and there's some that you take one every day. Most people who are not gonna remember probably would prefer that once a week um, uh, malaria prophylactics. In, in terms of the logistics going over there, which it hasn't, it hasn't been finalized yet, but Mrs. Bentham is, is we're thinking of doing a non-stop flight from Washington DC, I think, is that what it's one? Either that one or, or going or, through Amsterdam? Or even, yes, because it's a better, I didn't want to do that long. That long it. non-stop. Mm -hmm. Well, well there, there are two ways. We can either go non-stop or connect in Amsterdam, in Europe, mm -hmm. whether London or Amsterdam, and if you connect in Europe, you're going to get there the following evening at 7, 8 p.m. Whereas if you go nonstop, you get there the next morning. And um, I, I, I'm going to stop talking because it's easier to answer questions than um, to continue. So uh, if you have any questions. So I, want, I, wanted, I wanted to talk about the yellow fever. The yellow fever is the <coughs> mandatory shot that you need to have. And the malaria pill is not mandatory, but is strongly suggested that you have. So that's what I'm strongly suggesting because I know that's what I get malaria pills all the time before I go. And I take the one every day. 
and it was suggested to me in taking young people that we have a medicine time, that we, do, we be responsible for distributing the medication on a day-to-day -day basis to make sure that all the young people have taken their malaria pills. Um, so that, that's, that's huge. Um, we have to have mosquito spray repellent for our skin because at sunset, when mosquitoes begin to come out of the woodwork, then we, that's when we need to spray our body. Do you mind if I go? Did I hear that those Sephila does art presentation on Front Street that she has to go to? Go ahead. And no, no one I'm making a film of this, so I will no, have I it on. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to talk. Oh, come on, talk. You sure? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, hi. Um, um, this is Johnson from Random Dude that works around here. Mm -hmm. Thanks for having me. Um, Miss Benson. I reminded me to come after I left the meeting down 440, and I was going to go home and change clothes and then go to the art show. It's okay. But, you know, as I was walking in here, I thought about something, and don't laugh. I thought about one of Richard Pryor's stand-up shows. And he said, you know, my first time in Africa, I went there, and I got off the plane, and I was like, wow. So I started to walk around the place, and I think he said, he went to Ghana. So I walk around the place, and he was like, they're all black people. There ain't no ends around here. And just this whole, like the whole skit was just so positive. And if, for you kids who don't know who Richard Pryor is, he's probably one of probably the funniest comedians to ever live. But he had a filthy mouth, like just potty mouth. And when he went to Africa, he stopped calling black people the N-word during his stand-up. Because he said, I will never ever use that word again. And it's funny because I know a lot of us want to go off to Paris, go to London, we go to all of these European countries when we get some money because we think that we made it. Why? Like, why would we go to Paris before you go someplace in Africa? So, I'm 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 thanking Miss Bento and these this 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 group for providing the opportunity for um, children of color um, to look at probably the most beautiful place on earth and to get a lesson in just who you truly are. And I'm sure that when you come back, I'm sorry, when we come back, I'm going to. Mm -hmm. And um, Sage, and his son. I told him, we're not going without you. So and get back. he's been to Africa twice. I haven't been yet. <laughs> and that's, that's, that's a bad thing. That's horrible. Um, I'm, I'm sure it's going to have a profound effect on who we are, how we view the world, how we view people. I'm, I'm sure it is. So thank you for coming out know that um, that price tag may look big, but trust me, it's not. We can do this. We can make this happen. This is something small. You know, we can, we can definitely make this happen. All right? So, I'm sorry. No, thank you. I'll be here a couple more people more weeks. And I'll answer the questions for you guys. Anybody else have any questions? I have a question. Sure. So, I have a couple questions. So, um, where is the, or has the accommodations been determined? Say that again? The accommodation, so Mr. the hotel, has that been determined yet, or is that Mr. Murray? still? Yes. We have, we have two groups there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they're not that much different in terms of, in terms of, let's say, standard, but we wanted to give Everyone will have to be in the same in the same group. Where if we choose group A or we choose group B, these are mostly three-star properties. Mm -hmm. In Ghana, you have three, four, and five stars. These are mostly three-star properties. They're clean, comfortable, and one of the things that that we didn't want is to put students in luxury. 
Number one, it would be expensive, and we want them to keep it a little sort of, for want of a better word, real. But they won't, they'll be comfortable, air-conditioned, clean, and um, we, we, at the, la the last day when you're in a crowd, uh, Mrs. Benton pur purposely chose a four-star hotel, a cross city hotel. For one night. To, to show you a little difference. Mm -hmm. And a cross city hotel used to be Novotel, uh -huh. the, the European brand, yeah. until they rebranded it two years ago. So you, you, and, and we didn't want to put you in that property the first day, mm -hmm. so you get spoiled and say, we're expecting this all the time. We're going to put you in that property yeah. at, at the last day. So, so you'll see next time when you go back and you're earning big money from your tech job and you want to mm -hmm. stay in luxury, then you may choose <laughs> that. So that was my other question. So I see that there's two groups, group A group, 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 group B. So the large group, I'm assuming, is being split into two and then we're like, in, no, it's it's Group A hotels and Group oh, B hotels, I see, I see. Okay. and Group A hotels are going to be about 150, close to 200 dollars more. more than Group B. Got it. In the end, the whole group will be either in Group A or B. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. Yeah, we'll be traveling together the entire time. Uh, we'll probably have uh, a night for adults, um, so that you can see what Ghana nightlife is all about mm -hmm. and then we'll have um like the chaperones who stay back um but mr Benton said he would take you all out and do that which you don't see in the itinerary <laughs> because we were keeping it very educational <laughs> okay <laughs> so there we did think through um ben Truman and i did think through mm -hmm. an, uh, some nights out for the adults and then also um for pastor eaton he's interested in um, the churches over there, and so we'll make sure he's connected with churches there and pastors there. So I don't mean to pause all the questions. Sorry. No, that's fine. <laughs> but so I, so I know it's open to family. So like, if I, if my husband wanted to come along. So my husband does a lot of public health. Well, he does public health work. Mm -hmm. Um. So if would there be an opportunity for us to see like a like a health clinic or something related to health or yeah. something like that? Yeah. Um. Especially for students who might be interested in health or international health and things like that. Yeah, yeah. I think okay. I, yeah, I think you're welcome to do that. You know, it's e that's easy to do because every place where we're going, there are healthcare facilities nearby. Um, there are some that just locals use. Mm -hmm. He can see both ends of that: what the locals use, and then what an American would use yeah. when they go. Like when I, I was there, I lived there for seven months with Sam. And when I was there, he didn't take me where the locals went. He took me to where Americans would go to yeah. make sure that I was cared for in a way that I was accustomed to. Um, so that's how we handled that. But I do know both places yeah. because I did go visit people in hospitals there. So I did do that. So young, young people. Um, mm -hmm. I have a follow up to your question since you raised it. Mm -hmm. So then how are you going to work with the science and social science teachers to come up with an interdisciplinary project so the kids going to Africa can do their research on those types of studies? That's, well, I, I just got a question. Like, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just going out there. I mean, I'm just going out there. I, we're going to so talk by, about by, academics. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I mean, so that's something that be, we can... Yeah. Just to think of, I've done international public health trips and, and our efforts here to be a, a community connected school. Um, I think I can think of something where we can think of a project that we can do related to, and it doesn't have to be health related, but just related to kind of community engagement from an international perspective. Um, and so I would have to think of it. But yeah, but the idea would to be to think of what type of project or things we can think about um, doing that, and um, or yeah. or can these kids have a special IOP and capstone, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. focuses on that? Every you mad? <laughs> no, you know me. Stop. A special capstone that you know makes them 
you know, do their own research, you know, and, you know, find their own vaccines. And it could also be a part of their fundraising efforts, too. Mm -hmm. Sorry, we got more work to do. Any other questions? Any questions? Santana? You don't have one? Antoine, you have any questions? I just, I just raised my hand. Okay. Yeah, good. <laughs> yeah, I raised my hand. Um, well, we see like a lot of animals out in Ghana. Um, now you know when you think about. No, no, stop, people. stop. That's why this project is key yeah. because they don't know, yeah. and that's why it's important for them to have an IOP mm -hmm. where they're doing research mm -hmm. because their perception of the majority of the countries in Africa is. What is it? Well, exactly. and, 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 but it's, and it's not your fault. No, nope, it's not. It's our fault because we haven't exposed you to what Africa is. Mm -hmm. So I apologize for all of us adults around the United States mm -hmm. who bombard you guys with the image of, of Africa that's not real. Mm -hmm. I'm part of it. But it's a really good question. It's, it is a good question. I think, Sam, you could answer it too. Like, you grew up there, you lived there your whole life. Uh, should I answer your question? Mm -hmm. Now, when you when you we are going to Africa, right, or mm -hmm. Ghana, mm -hmm. how, what is the mode of travel? Are we going to go there by bicycle, car, or anything, bus or something like that? What do you think? Like, what do I take? We'll go by mm -hmm. plane, of course. Exactly. Because, like, and where will, where would the plane land? You get what I mean? Yeah. So this is it. So if you have an if you have an airport here, there's an airport in Ghana. Right. Right? right. And uh, oh. have you have you ever seen airports on trees? <laughs> oh what? <laughs> yeah. Right. No. Have you ever seen? Yeah. You know. Right. Now we have airport is being built on land, right? Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you definitely land on an airport. You sleep in houses. You are not going to. So all the ideas that you have about Africa, again, sometimes people ask me those questions. I also ask them some tiny questions that makes them. Sometimes they feel bad mm -hmm. because sometimes I just tell them that where do you stay? Where where do you live in Philly here? Mm -hmm. And some places in Philly here, I can't even compare them to places in Ghana. Although you might, they might think that oh. I once had a conversation with somebody and said that, oh, you, you are here, you, when you were in Ghana, you were drinking dirty water. I said, what? Now, what are you talking about? Even I don't even use dirty water to flush my WC. <laughs> <laughs> right? So what are you talking about? So all that they, they know is that um, people in Ghana or people in Africa, we, we because Africa is a third world place, country, we have, but it's not, it's not like that. You go to Ghana and you'll be surprised. We own our own stuff. In Africa, we run things. Things don't run out like America. America, America, the pressure will push you. You have to do it. But Ghana, you know, you have to, you have to live. You get what I mean? And and we, we we believe in the family system. We believe in the I mean we, we believe in the family system. So even if you are in need, you just you can just fall on any family member and they will, they are ready to help you. Yeah. The love, the bond is there. The love is there. And we were talking about the security. Now, if uh, for myself, I need security myself, mm -hmm. and I wouldn't like to take you to places that it's not it's not safe. Exactly that. You want to get, make, you want to make sure that everybody that goes on this trip is safe. Exactly. So, and the only thing that I think that we need to protect ourselves against is the Mosquitoes and the mosquitoes, we can't do anything. <laughs> Even in America, we have mosquitoes here. You get what I mean? Yeah, we have mosquitoes here. Sometimes I will just walk in the evening, especially this season, and I'll be bitten by mosquitoes. I have to be hitting myself. Like, and they are, it, American mosquitoes are even bigger, <laughs> bigger than the Ghanaian mosquitoes. <laughs> yes, they, when, they start, when they step on you, I, you feel like you have spice on your skin. <laughs> you get what I mean? How big, how big are the mosquitoes? Like, you can't even see that. The only thing that will be in action. That is it. If I may say, no, we talk about sec security all the time, but don't forget, was it last week or you know, two weeks mm -hmm. two weeks ago when 
Um, and in Philly, there were nine people shot. Mm-hmm. And a, but we're talking about security. Mm-hmm. Like, and they don't have I, those I, issues there. It's rare. Right, it's like, it's, they it's, don't it's, have them. We, we, we need to focus on security here. Right. We're more likely to get hurt here mm-hmm. than probably any other place around the world. You're right. You're definitely right, Mr. Johnson. I agree with you 100% on that. Because, like, it's like being the, right? They're like, I'm 16 now, and I've been here for like four, like five, like what, five years now? Five, yeah, but five years. So, with my sister, she's like put me onto like a lot of things, like things like um, like 12 years of slave, like a lot of movies that's regarding slavery and, and history and stuff, and that's like put a lot in on me, and like it helps me when like i'm doing something in my history class and i'm like like a, like a journal or something mm-hmm. i'll use my back knowledge that i had back when i back when i went to this place and i'll remember it and i'll put it in my paper mm-hmm. and like i think this is a like a good opportunity for everybody mm-hmm. especially me because like i, I just want to see like what is it like out there like mm-hmm. what's the like what's the environment like because mm-hmm. everything that just like everything like culture and all that. I want to see all of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I do want to answer this question because I actually went to Ghana. I stayed in Montehago. I yeah, went to yeah. you know, Cape Coast and all that. I don't want to ruin it for anyone. But yeah, you're going to see some animals, but they're not just roaming free. You're going to see chickens. You're going to see some cows. You're going to see some dogs. Uh, you might even see a monkey if there's a man, you know, telling a monkey to shake your hand. But, so, yeah, you're going to see some Oh, uh, is that what you're, you're talking about those animals? No, like, we call them domestic animals, you know. Yeah, we call but them. Not like yeah, we don't have lions, to, like, tigers. You know. yeah. Yeah, no. No. The wildebeest. Yeah, like no, the- we'll have to go to East Africa to see all that mm-hmm. in Kenya, Kenya. and China. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But in America, you wouldn't see like chicken in the house, you know, but in Ghana, you, yeah, you can just yeah. see, see it in the yard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right, right. And so, what the plan is, is not only to fundraise, but also to take you through a series of cultural orientation and environmental orientation sessions. Um, And what I said for the adults, um, knowing that you all work and can't always get to school, um, everything would be put up on YouTube so that you can interact with the video. But I would probably give you some sort of Q&A after the fact so that I know that you're interacting with the video because we really do want to go with some pre-knowledge um, prior to um, attending um, so that your eyes can even be, they can be widely open once you get there because you'll have all this back knowledge, prior knowledge to take with you prior to landing on the continent. But for the fundraiser wise, like, like what fundraiser would like what do we be doing? So, so I had a I have a yeah. list of different fundraisers, um, and that's a good question, Antoine, because every month we need to do at least two or three different things to defray the cost. Mm-hmm. And really, I think of Deshaun over here with his yeah. artwork. Yeah, Deshaun. Yeah, Deshaun is a hustler. Yeah, he, Deshaun he didn't pay anything to go to um, uh, Costa Rica, and it was about twenty eight hundred dollars to go to Costa Rica. Mm-hmm. And he didn't pay anything because he raised money by doing everything. Right. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, we have to be very innovative in what we do. And fortunately, next year we have the building to ourselves. Um, so we can do talent shows. Um, we can have coffee houses, open mic nights, um, karaoke. We can uh, treat our parents and have parent parties um, just so that they can be celebrated. We can get corporate sponsors. Um, I'm looking at over the summer writing grants. And Miss Reed knows about that with me and writing grants for us to get money. And I didn't pick out any definite fundraisers because I want the young people to take part in that. Because if you don't have ownership to what it is 
that needs to be done for us to go. Mm -hmm. I can't do the fundraising, all the fundraising for you. Right. I can do the organizing of it. Mm -hmm. And once we settle down and say, this is what we're going to do. Now, this is my second, the second meeting that we've had. We had about 17 or 18. Yeah, morning. yeah we had about 17 or 18 people. And what uh, I told Mr. Johnson, I said, this first trip should be about 20 to 30 young people. And with that in mind, we are going to be the network of funding, of raising funds in order for this to happen. And also, we don't have to close out our eyes to the new electronic crowdfunding um, uh, through GoFundMe and some of the other uh, sources that people raise money for these efforts. Um, so, you know, the first thing that we had to do is get the interest. I think the funding part is the easy part because once people see that inner city young people who've never been on the continent want to go to the continent, people are going to be dropping money at your feet. Well, we have to be ready. Yes, they are. They I, don't, I don't like that. What? I like them working for something that they want. To. Okay. I don't like them begging them all the time. Like I hate it when the football teams out in the corner of the street. Raffles. And no, they have the helmets. They come the, up to your cars. Uh, yeah. Give us money. No, dude. No, that's not what we teach here. No. You know, so the question is, how are you going to hustle and save your money because you have a goal in mind? Okay. Same way when you go buy your first house. How are you going to hustle up the money because you have that goal in mind? Same way with college. Like, so I'm, I'm saying, let's okay. give them those skills now. All right. As opposed to, you know, I'm not saying begging, but, you know, but, you know, asking people for something that you can get on your own. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry if that sounds like that. No, it doesn't. Oh, because we've like already this. started already when we do the Jamaican patties. And that's through the African Con uh, Root Connection Club. That's how they started selling Jamaican patties. Thinking about uh, putting a trip together to go to Ghana. And then earrings. We sell earrings now which we'll be doing more of that. And that's basically through one of the seniors who thought of, well, we can raise funds like this um, because of the maker space that we have. Um, so those those are two ways, but there are a lot of different ways. I don't even know where I put that paper and I'm, I'm so sorry because I have a whole list of fundraising ideas um, and work that we can do. Is there a certain amount of students that have to attend in order for the trip to the, the total um, number, minimum number should be 10 in total. Of everybody. everybody. Right. Of oh. persons. Yes. 10 persons. Travelers. Yes. Okay. And now, I just want to know, that 3,400 divided by 12. Uh, yeah. Last month when I did the meeting, May 22nd, was 13 months in advance of travel, was $276 a month mm -hmm. um, that we thought about. We're in June now. Is that cost dependent so, upon the amount of people to attend? Or does that? The, the minimum of 10 will keep the cost. Will keep the price. Okay. Okay. So that's $283 today. That's $283 a month per person that would have to be generated. And you all are the second family of three who has come. Um, so it is possible. It is possible. So, you know, Anne, can you say the first thing on your right? Hand me this on this table. Yeah, your pocket. You're going home. Yo, five cents. It's not so hustle like that. Kitty, making some money. Everything. I mean, that is, that, that, that's easy money. That is easy. Mm -hmm. All you gotta do is just. I know. It's tough to raise money. That's yeah, right. I mean, it, is. It is. It's, it's consistent. It's consistent. It's, yes, it's, consistent. it's laborious. Mm -hmm. Um, and and it has to be well thought. And right. really, I'm sad. I'm happy and I'm sad mm -hmm. because we're about to break for two months. This is probably a tough one to raise money. Right, and so we have to go out with the plan. So with Ms. the young people, I will be meeting with you again, especially because a $50 deposit is due by June 14th. That's how I'm gonna know who really wants to go. 
um, because by then we have to have a definite count um, for Mr. Lloyd to put our flight plans in action. Mm -hmm. um, and we have to have that definite plan. So we all have to have a $50 deposit um, by June 14th. Um, and the document, so within that packet, to read through, and a lot of the packet has to do with personality issues and, and socialization and your beliefs. Um, and, and I think more so for the adults than for the children, really, because we don't want to ruin the experience with young people. Because this is about young people, really. This really is about them. It's not about us, even though we need to go too and we need to do things, but it's really about us and helps us take a look at who we are and, and how who we are impacts a group, either positively or negatively. Um, and then there's this waiver because the School District of Philadelphia can't be held responsible, nor can SLA or Anchory Schools be held responsible. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, Mr. Murray and I too, we talked about an insurance package on top of the travel package. Um, we talked about that, but we haven't rolled out any prices yet. How is the position pretty affordable? It is very affordable. You talked, you you said uh, a guesstimate cost last time. When we when we get the group the group rate, um, it it should be no more than approximately a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. I was saying that like over the summer we can have like summer car washes too. We can do car washes. Mm -hmm. I'm game. I'm not going out in the country this year, so I'm game to do that. Hmm? We need a job. Well, we oh, can do that summer. Too. We can do a car wash on the side of the job. What's <laughs> 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 my job? My job when I come over there and visit uh, summer school this summer because I have to. Uh, and that's right. And I have to observe teachers. So that's. You really want me to get fired? I can't come over there. And you really want to teaching? use school district resources? Oh no, no, not for that. To fundraise, you really want to see fundraise? That's not. We'll figure that out. <laughs> yes, no, 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 we're not. <laughs> no, we can't. No, yeah. not using school district funds to do a car wash. You're using the water. Oh no, we would have to find someplace else. I'm thinking about Pastor Eaton over here. You know, we need <laughs> to church or something. Somebody, we can do something. They have water. See, we have water. Like a hose. Yeah, hose. <laughs> <laughs> hose. Yeah. Well, we'll work past it. <laughs> 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 yeah. But no, it really, and this is comes back to the African proverb: it takes a village to raise a child, and we really can't do this by ourselves. Thus, me inviting the pastor. Because I know, you know, even though Mr. Johnson thinks, you know, he just lays it out there and it just happens, it takes a village to make it happen. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Johnson is the leader of this village here, and I'm willing to do whatever, but I know when I can't do something by myself. I just know it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just know it. Okay? So all of us here are very important. And you know, the people see it, this on uh, YouTube, those who came before at the last meeting know how important their presence is and what they can give to this kind of exploration. Learning, cultural, global exploration. So June 14th is your first date that you have to think about, all right, June 14th. And if no one has any more questions, I don't want to hold you up. And you are welcome to take the candy with you. <laughs> oh, anybody that needs any passport, I did print out passport applications and instructions, okay? Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Oh, that's how it is. Oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, honey. So, you need this whole pack completed by us as well, adults. Yes. Okay.